Sending shots, so much shots Hit his body, you don't think I think I got the monkey pops Moving on dead silence It's a war zone outside Moving like Little Red Robin Hoodie on all the time I'm tired of the fake shit Tired of the bullshit Tired of the bullshit as talented as this young woman, still trying to get on track here in the UFC, but would appear to have a, a decided grappling advantage in this matchup. And it, it boils down to the judo, right? The moment she can get a hold of you, she starts feeding the hips. The moment she can feed her hips into your body, you're going for a ride. You may as well be flying from San Jose all the way to New York City because she's taking you up and over, feet over the head, and once on the ground, you have got to start keeping your arms in tight because she's looking for a beautiful arm bar, a beautiful triangle. It does not matter. It's just her with the ability to maneuver and manipulate her opponents that has allowed her to get going in the UFC. You couldn't have put it any better. And when fighters have tried to sweep her or reverse her in the UFC, haven't realized a lot of success. All they end up doing is tap right <laughs> set as we have for a fighter in this division and she was pretty tight-lipped in our fighter meeting in terms of what her strategic approach would be here tonight she could do it all she's a well-rounded fighter and i get excited john but i gotta limit myself when i start to make these comparisons because i want to yell valentina wow. but i think aaron blanchfield a young fighter that when you see aaron blanchfield you go wow that's a future champion that's what i get with this kid i believe that her skill set her ability to be so well-rounded gives her an opportunity to have a massive future. But you don't get a future unless you take care of what happens right now that's getting her hand raised tonight. And not unlike a lot of our young athletes, she started mixing the martial arts. It was no Taekwondo base or a wrestling base. She's been doing it all since a very young age, and uh, obviously the results in the UFC certainly speak to that. Here is tonight's tale of the tape. The veteran voice of the Octagon, Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, presenting the former UFC women's bantamweight champion of the world, Misha Cupcake Tate. And now introducing her opponent, fighting out of the red corner, Kathleen Benamino. One of the best in the business, Herb Dean, is our referee tonight. All right, to the MMA leader back in Montreal tonight. We are inside Bell Center where the hockey fans are making noise for mixed martial arts tonight. This is as good an MMA setting as we have on the entire calendar. I remember sitting in the back before Josh Koscheck fought Joel Shapiro and thinking, wow, the Canadian fans have treated this great this week. But the moment we hit the curtain, you felt the booze. You felt that we were uninvited because they were there to cheer on their guy, George St. Pierre. But look, it's not limited to just him. They cheer all fighters for all great fights in the belt center. Glancing right hand lands upstairs. 
Oh, pretty good entry here on the double leg takedown. No good. Oh, she gets inside and gets the single collar tie. So nice back the world from the former Strike Force champion, Misha Tate. Mm, that was nice. Tate's in half court. Oh, she needs the body here at side mount. Well done. Tate's back in half court. Tate getting that ground and pound going and landing. She's got her back now, DC, and I don't mean she's like there to support her, right? She is literally on her back and in control of this fight. She's in control of this fight. Look for her to start trying to slide that arm under the neck to finish the fight with chill. Tate's able to transition back to side control now. Gotta be careful here. I need you to take the back position now. Three minutes to go. That was a slick transition. Viet is back into full guard. Well, there are a few things more fun to watch in mixed martial arts than these type of transitions and scrambles on the ground. High-level grappling can really be entertaining. All right, half guard position for her here, and this is a spot where we've seen her have a lot of wild success in previous fights. She has a tremendous amount of success in this position because she's so knowledgeable. She keeps the right side underhook, and she just goes to work with that left arm. She's posting and elbowing. She's building her posture and punching. There are just so many different ways for her to score strikes from this position. She wanted out of that clinch and able to get out. Big elbow there, guys. All right, so some adversity for her here. Looks like she has been opened up around that eye. Anything worth having will not be easy, but she's got to protect that cut because it will get worse if she continues to get hit on. Vieta gets caught by that flush straight punch. Nice job by the offense there. Oh, stuffs the takedown without issue. She's starting to put together some significant body work here, and these are going to take their toll as this fight goes on. Did a great job of blocking that punch. Oh, big knee. Oh, that's nice take up. Great defense from her back. Oh, nice. Nice, you got the strap. Under a minute now to go in round one. Knee to the body here inside control. Continuing to stay busy here on the ground. Stay relaxed. Oh, she's got her back. Well, she was long on grappling experience coming into the UFC, and you see her chops here. Just beautiful when it comes to the transition. It's very difficult to keep up with her on the ground. All right, so she told us in the fighter meeting the body shots were gonna be key, and they certainly have been. She invested early, and now you're starting to see some damage on the other side. Yeah, she's doing a great job of following the game. DC, I know you got my back. She's got her back, and she can do a lot of damage from here. I've got your back, as an I'm your boy, J.E. She's got her back as if she wants to end her night right now. She's gotta be very careful. And now she has her back. That horn sounds means we have reached the end of round one. All right, so there's the horn indicating the end of the round, but not before damage was done. She was right, cut see, on her cheek yeah, from the strike in that round, it. and now the focus for the cut it's man shutting that thing and making sure it doesn't become a factor here moving forward. All right, so she does survive to see the next round, but as we show you some replays, DC, nobody's gonna be kissing her on the cheek anytime soon. <laughs> no, it's a nasty cut on the cheek. She got hit with some big shots, and they really have taken an effect on her. Look at the cut on the cheek, and it was that shot right there that opened up the cut. You ready to fight? Ready. 
Round two here. How clean is that jab by Vieta? Defense held up there as she blocks that shot. Vieta gets caught by that straight punch there. Another punch to the head. Oh, man, I hate to laugh, but she lands another kick there, and now you're really starting to see that visible damage on the other side. When you start seeing the redness in the leg, that means that every time she is driving that baseball bat right into the thigh where she wants it to land, and now her opponent is limping, her opponent's wounded, her opponent's injured, and now watch the target be way more stationary. Heavy leather landed on both sides in that exchange. Man, every time her opponent lands, that cut's getting worse. The cut gets worse and worse. She needs to move her head, or she's gonna find herself in a lot of danger. And now some knees. All right, so no surprise to see her continuing to attack that area. That cut is gonna get wider with every passing moment of the fight. You know, generally you expect it to get worse. When you're fighting someone like her, you know it's gonna get worse because she's as sharp and as crisp as any striker you ever step in the octagon in. So she's gonna be on that cut and attacking that cut relentlessly. Good job by her here to land some strikes from top position. Oh, elbows from the bottom now, okay. Well, I'm not sure her hands, her striking has ever looked better. She continues to land with volume, with pace, with power. Yeah, with pace and pressure. It's, it's an overwhelming feeling being in there with her when she's fighting at this level. When everything's working, she is as good as anyone in the UFC. Tonight, she is at her peak level. Look at the skip action that allows her to land that big knee. Ooh, nice defense. I thought that punch might get through. Viet is able to protect the eye there with that block, so that is a nice adjustment that the fighter made there to raise the guard and prevent further damage on that cut. Well, she continues to land to the body, attacking those organs, right? Not a lot of protection there, and you're seeing some visible damage now on the other side. Visible damage. She's done a tremendous job understanding and recognizing where the weakness was. And she has exploited that, and she's gonna continue as she tries to get her hand raised. Tate's back in side control. Beautiful transition. Well, now that blood really starting to affect her vision, or so it would appear, and it's muting her offense as well. Or she's got a swollen eye and the cut. So she continues to get beat in that same area. She has got to move her head. But she's got to be offensive if she wants something to change. Right into side control. Tate's back in half guard, very comfortable here. Great movement by her here on the ground, and she just does it so fluidly, and so she's got her back now. All right, right into side control now. We'll see if she can dole out some damage. A lot of fighters would prefer the half guard. She does pretty good work here. Though. She does great work in the half guard. She's very brutal. She's very heavy with her top half. So she doesn't worry about the opponent escaping. And this side control is very good for her because she wants to wear on you. She wants you to try to... She's got her back now, DC, and I don't mean she's like there to support her, right? She is literally on her back and in control of this fight. She's in control of this fight. Look for her to start trying to slide that arm under the neck to finish the fight with a chill. All right, so the body shots continue to be the narrative in this fight, and a lot of bruising now starting to develop on that side. You know, the kicks, the punches, the knees, just the ability to mix up all of her... Gotta be careful here. Tate's back in full now. Side control. Well, she's leaking a lot of blood now. That cut is getting worse with every strike land. And the blood is flying. Her confidence is growing. She will continue to try and target that cut until someone has... Oh, she's got her back. Right into side control. Final seconds. Tate 
Horn's able to make a nice transition there back into oh. side control. And the horn sounds on round two. Stop, stop. All right, stop. good news is the round is over. Bad news, Tate's corner now. We'll take a look at that lip. The cut man is in, and you got to tighten that up. It's really starting to bleed now. We'll see if uh, it rears its ugly head as this fight continues. All right, back to the stool she goes. We'll see if they can close up that cut, and it's a pretty big one she's dealing with on her cheek. It's a nasty cut on her cheek, but it's in a better spot. It's not blood leaking into her eye. It's more pain now, because every time she gets hit in it, it's going to hurt. She's got to be a little better on the defensive side of things. You ready to fight? You ready? Third yeah. round underway. And that one certainly found the target. Takedown defense is there. Oh, nice combination of knees in the clinch here by Vieta. You cannot take those leg kicks clean like that. As she gets the takedown perfectly timed. All right, she's got her in the north-south position now, DC. If you're the bottom fighter, nothing advantageous about it. It's not a good position to be in when you're in the bottom position. You've got to try to force some sort of improvement. You've got to force some sort of action that will allow you to return to your... DC, I know you got my back. She's got her back, and she can do a lot of damage from here. I've got your back, as and I'm your boy, J.A. She's got her back as if she wants to end her night right now. She's got to be very careful. All right, so her ground control is outstanding. Half guard is when she's at her most dangerous. Yes, yeah, she's at her most dangerous when she has the half guard because she's so brutal with the ground and pound. She likes to go after fighters and really wear on them, force them to make decisions to give their backs, and now she has her back. How good is her movement here on the ground, right? Shades of Ray Gore just transitioning so beautifully. Yeah, she's so good at transitions and movement. Her ability is unmatched. Mm, nice. She's got her back now. Oh, right, it's a mount. Tate's back inside control here. And there you go, again, half guard. Oh, and she raises the knee and lands, so a pretty good sign for her that she was able to find a home for that knee. When she's got the knees working, she's fighting really good, so right now she must feel great. She's got her back now, DC, and I don't mean she's like there to support her, right? She is literally on her back and in control of this fight. She's in control of this fight. Look for her to start trying to slide that arm under the neck to finish the fight with a choke. <laughs> Gotta be careful here. Tate's back to the side control now. Half guard position for her here, and if you're the bottom fighter, this is truly a case of, of pick your poison. Yeah, you gotta pick your poison. And if you're on the bottom, you gotta be trying to find a way to escape that bottom leg. You cannot allow your opponent, you cannot allow her to sit on your leg and just throw big damage and strikes. You've got to make sure you're on an elbow control, an underhook, and getting back to your feet. Oh, she gets the strike through again and continues to go after that bad cut. Oh, look at this. She's got her in the crucifix. A lot of body weight with which to contend. We'll see how she tries to get up. It's a very tough situation for the bottom girl. But for the top fighter, all she has to do is just maintain and keep control. Keep it safe. Don't allow it to turn chaotic. Because when it turns chaotic, you lose one of the arms. You got to keep both of the arms. Punch, punch, punch. Elbow, elbow, elbow. And end the fight. She has got to move her head from the bottom. She has been beaten. Pillar to post, and right now, she has a massive cut on her face. Well, the ground and pound has been on point tonight. Good work here by Tate. Side control now. There's that knee to the body. All right, she's got her in a crucifix now. I would think a lot of options at her disposal offensively. Yeah, she's got all the options. All she needs to do is be patient. Drop elbows, drop big punches. Just really start to lay into your opponent, but do it in a way that you don't lose all the work that you put in to gaining such a dominant position. 
All right, she's right into side control right now, and a lot of fighters would prefer the half guard, but she does some pretty good work here. She does good work in the side control. She likes it. A lot of people will not even pass the side control right. anymore because it seems like you're giving your opponent an out. But she loves the fact that she has such a great guillotine, and if they turn one way, she'll attack it. So you only have one option to escape this young lady, and by going to your knees, she always throws her hooks in right. and just gets brutal damage off from the top position. Tate's able to transition back to side control now. All right, she's got her in a crucifix from top position here, DC. What are you trying to do with your legs to maintain control of that arm? You know, you got to take the knee, slide it over the top of one of the arms, so that when they're bridging and turning, the arm is just going up and down your shin, blocked by your ankle, blocked by your knee. That's how you keep them there, and you maintain the underhook on the other side. So you control one part with your knee, one part with your arm, and then you just use your hands to just punch and beat them up. Well, she's dealing with a pretty big cut now. We'll see if we can isolate exactly where it happened in that previous round. Man, she took way too many shots in round one. She was not being responsible defensively, and ultimately she is paying for it because now she's having a real tough time dealing with that cut. Ready to fight. Ready. All right, here's round four. Fight scheduled for five five-minute rounds. Duffs the takedown shot there. How good is her takedown, D? Big knee lands to the bottom. Oh, yet another knee landed by Vieta. Well, the Muay Thai reps paying off tonight. Beautiful set of knees by her there. She said her opponent will present knee opportunities. To this point, she looks like a genius. Vieta's cheek is just pouring blood. I can't see her jawbone yet, but that gash is absolutely disgusting. Oh, good defense here to stay upright after that single leg takedown offering. Oh, vicious knees landing up top. No head gear allowed in the octagon, and at some point defensively, if you don't adjust, the referee's going to step in. The night is almost over. You don't defend yourself. You will eventually go to sleep. Well, this is one of the more active rounds we have seen all night long. Both of these women have realized success with the strength, and they both seem damaged. It's always fun when you get a fight like this, when you see the blood on both sides, when you see the swelling on both sides where you see the concern from both fighters recognizing that, wow, I've got my equal in front of me. Let's see who can push through and get the victory. Well, fights like this make this sport the greatest in the world. These two ladies have gone back and forth all night. I don't know who's going to be the last one standing, but it has been one of the best fights of the year. And one of the best fights of the year. Both have laid it on the line. The blood the bruising, the physicalness of this fight has been so fun to watch. I don't know if I even care who win the fight. I just know that I've been entertained, and I know that both of these women are going home with some extra bonus money. Tate's back in side control. Oh, look at this. She's got her in the crucifix. A lot of body weight with which to contend. We'll see how she tries to get up here. It's a very tough situation for the bottom girl. Before the top fighter, all she has to do is just maintain and keep control. Keep it safe. Don't allow it to turn chaotic, because when it turns chaotic, you lose one of the arms. You got to keep both of the arms. Punch, 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 elbow, 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 and end the fight. Oh, she's got her back. Tate's really pressing now, and she's got her opponent's belly firmly placed on the mat. Most fighters will tell you offensive wrestling is the hardest, most exhausting thing. Especially if you're just running the guy over, John, and then he just gets up. Ground and pound the hammer, Mark Coleman would be proud. Oh, she's got side control now, knee to the body. DC, I know you got my back. She's got her back, and she could do a lot of damage. Attempting a choke now. Oh, that rear naked choke attempt is tight. I cannot believe she got out of that. She shoved the elbow up, created space, freed her neck, and defended that rear naked choke. She's back in the sub attempt. Oh, it's getting deep. What a sub attempt. Oh, great submission defense as she gets out. Tate's got her head going to the guillotine now. It's tight. 
Here we go inside the Octagon for the official decision to Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean has called a stop to this contest at three minutes, 28 seconds of round number four. Declaring the winner by tap out, Misha Kupete! Well, it'll be standing room only at her after party tonight as she gets it done by way of submission. Thankfully, Daniel Cormier uh, is on the list. I'll be on the outside looking. I mean, John, I got you. We're going in together. <laughs> I'm not going in without my partner. But, man, she's a great grappler. She understands positioning Who's so well. Z and she knows the moment her opponent got three, out of position, she was able to attack her finish. Great job, great performance. I don't have enough words to say congratulations to this young lady. I was a year away from that.